What's going on guys? It's Omni York and today we're giving you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to El Cid in Rise of Kingdoms. So 2021 just began and this game is a couple of years old now and there's over 35 different legendary commanders in this game so i spent a good portion of the last week compiling what i'm going to call an investment tier list so it's not a tier list in the sense that this is the best commander in the entire game this is a tier list in a sense that these are the commanders that will give you the most value for your investment in rise of kingdoms the way that i went about this is i actually compiled some data from players that i think are a little bit more experienced than me they've got more fighting experience they have more expertise legendary commanders and I filter that data through my own experience with this game and I have a list that I'm pretty confident with sharing now instead of just sharing this list all at once I thought it would be pretty interesting to actually turn this into a tier list series where I give you the context and thought process behind each and every ranking for each commander so I was sitting here thinking which commander should I start this series with and I figured El Cid would be the perfect commander because he's one of the oldest legendary commanders in the game and he's one that I actually haven't made a video about so far on my channel since this is the first video in my tier list series I want to go through a couple of definitions for you guys just so that we were on the same page each commander is broken down into seven categories those categories are open field fighting rallying cities rallying objectives defending cities defending objectives Canyon team performance and barbs in forts so I think from this perspective I would say Chiskel had a really good method of breaking down each commander into their respective roles compiling their performance in all seven of these roles will give an overall tier for that commander in terms of how good of an investment they are but I also don't think that each of these categories should be weighted the same for example a commander that's really good at killing barbarians might not be that valuable to a player who doesn't really do any barbing and really all that they like to do is rally cities so not only do I have an overall tier list for investment purposes but I also have a few tweaks to get rid of some of the categories that players might not be interested in so I have a tier list for players who don't care about defending their city now defending your city is really important but I think if you're an active player and you know what you're doing you're probably not going to get your city rallied in that same way I have a tier list that excludes the PVE content because a lot of big mega whales probably don't spend that much time chaining barbarians around the map so I think in this way from an investment perspective it gives you a good idea of which commanders are going to be best for you based on how you play the game and not just how the general population might see that commander if that sounds confusing it'll make sense later finally before we talk about El Cid I want to just define what each of the tiers roughly means in my head so if a commander is an S tier at a particular category that means that they are amazing at that category and they're one of the best in class to perform that activity if they're an A tier your commander that means they're really good at that activity and they're only outclassed by a couple of commanders if they're a B tier that means they're decent at that role and in some scenarios maybe you would want to use them but overall there's a lot of better choices if a commander is a C tier in a particular category that means that they're poor at doing that activity they're rarely somebody that you're gonna want to use and there's just a lot of better choices for you if a commander is a D tier in that particular category that means that they are bad at that activity and you should just avoid using them for that all the time and finally the F tier is reserved for the overall ranking of a commander if they have multiple D tiers and they just fall at the bottom of the tier list overall with all that being said let's take a look at El Cid El Cid is an archer skill based commander that you can get from gold keys and one of the earliest mightiest governor events taking a look at his skills his first skill has a rage requirement of a thousand and it deals a thousand damage factor to a single target and disables their active skills and normal attacks for one second what this means is that if they were going to use their active skill during that turn they actually won't which is really powerful but most turns commanders don't use their active skill which means that most of the value you're going to get from the skill is the damage factor and they'll lose one turn of normal attack damage and and this rage regeneration so there's a little bit of value there still even if it's not a turn where an active skill would have gone off as far as active skills on legendaries I'm not that impressed by the skill the damage factor is very very low Herman is an epic commander who also is archer and skill based who deals more single target damage factor with a two second silence overall this active skill is just not that impressive to me his second skill gives his attacks a 10 percent chance to deal an additional damage factor of 1000 so this is nice 
nice because this can actually if you get lucky this can pop off a lot because there is no internal cooldown here it's also great for short burst fights where you might not even have a chance to get off your active skill yet and you're already dealing a lot of damage factor to the enemy but again there's a lot of commanders in the legendary tier that have a skill similar to this that's just better if you look at alexander for example his second skill does this plus more and is a 1700 damage factor so that additional damage factor of a thousand still is just not impressive to me his third skill will give you 20 percent archer defense and 15 percent archer march speed defense is a really good stat it's better than an attack buff and the march speed is good for getting around the open field but the problem is that archers are countered by cavalry which are typically faster so you still will have some trouble running away from the units that counter you the most on top of that there's lots of other archer commanders that give more than a 20 percent buff to archer stats and so 20 here seems a little bit low considering the fact that the previous two skills also seem to be outclassed by other legendary skills his fourth skill is really interesting he gets 25 percent additional damage and 25 percent additional march speed when his army is below 50 percent health now in some instances this is really good but in open field instances this isn't that useful because well aside from mark of osiris you're probably not going to stay in the open field under that 50 percent mark so i guess it does help you run away in some instances finally his expertise gives you five percent archer attack five percent archer defense and deals an additional 2% damage to infantry units. As far as expertise skills go, this is not that impressive to me. Again, it bumps his battle stats for archers from a 20% to 30%, which is a bit more on par with some of the other legendaries, but there's still many out there that give 40 or more percent with chances of even more than that. Now, if we're talking about talent builds, there are two builds that I want to show you. Obviously, this is Kusunoki, but these builds apply to El Cid as well. This is my favorite build for archers because we go up here to Whistling Arrows. You also get the Rage Regeneration from razor sharp and from rejuvenate in the skill tree we have three points in latent power because the second skill on el cid does additional damage factor which is nice if you have latent power as well plus there's additional damage factor in phoenix tail arrows and you get a lot of extra skill damage from venomous sting right here now if you want to go all in on that rage engine then this is the build that i would personally use of course you could put some points into latent power again if you want to but honestly i think the archer stats are more important over here in full quiver and certainly with that rage generation from razor sharp. So with all that being said, let's talk about El Cid's open field performance. This is actually where El Cid shines the most because all of his skills, including his expertise, apply in the open field, which is not something that you can say for most commanders in this game. Most of them have something that relates to rallying or defending objectives or cities or something like that. The downsides to El Cid in the open field are that I feel like his damage factor just isn't that high, no matter how you cut it. And that fourth skill really isn't going to be applicable unless you're caught off guard in the open field, because really you don't want to be under that 50% mark, again, unless it's Ark of Osiris or maybe a Ruins fight. Overall, El Cid gets a B ranking in the open Open field category meaning that he is decent in the open field and there's some scenarios where you might want to use him the next two categories are rallying cities and rallying objectives and El Cid sort of falls short for both of those categories and for the same reasons there are so many archer commanders in the game that outclass El Cid when it comes to rallying like Ramses YSG Tamiris with Edward El Cid is really never gonna be a pick for an archer rally except for maybe in the very beginning of a kingdom where it's kvk1 and you do maybe like an El Cid YSG rally that's sort of a scenario where you might use him because of that both of those categories El Cid gets a C tier because he's not great at it and he's rarely a top choice but you know maybe the next category is defending objectives and this is a really interesting category for El Cid because he's not a garrison commander or a defense commander this fourth skill is sort of like a hidden gem for El Cid I don't think a lot of people talk about this that much when it comes to garrisons because you could put El Cid secondary to somebody like Artemisia and have a really powerful garrison captain once you hit that 50% mark all of the damage from that garrison is going to be elevated by 25 percent artemisia puts out a ton of skill damage her damage factor is huge and if you're constantly reinforcing that flag you're going to have a really really good time with this fourth skill also three of el cid's four skills don't care about what troop type is in that flag so of course you could put him secondary to somebody like theodora or yss now of course he's not a top choice for those commanders Artemisia is a different story because she focuses on archers, but again, it wouldn't be like the worst choice in the world, right? Because of that, El Cid gets a B tier ranking for defending objectives. I know that's going to be a little bit controversial for some of you, but I think a lot of people are sleeping on this fourth skill. And again, that just means he's 
decent at this and there's some scenarios where he could be used like the Artemisia example. Now, if we're talking about defending cities, that category is a bit different. And the reason for that is because El Cid overall does care about archers with this third skill. And unless your city is like 80% archers, I don't think I would recommend having him on your wall, even as a secondary. And the reason that this is different than the objective scenario is because you're not going to be getting constant reinforcements like a flag will. And if your city is getting hit, that 50% mark is the 50% mark. Your damage output is really going to go down after that. That, whereas with a flag you're constantly getting filled because of that El Cid is a D tier commander for defending your city just he's bad at it don't use him for that purpose when it comes to Canyon El Cid performs decently well here because well for the same reasons that he performs well in the open field all of his skills including his expertise apply in Canyon and you know for certain that he will go below that 50% mark on top of that, the Canyon meta right now is very infantry focused, but just like his open field performance, there's a lot of other archer legendaries that outclass him in this area where it would just be better to have like a Ramses or a YSG. For that reason, El Cid is a B tier commander for your Canyon team. Finally, when it comes to barbs and forts, El Cid is actually decent in this area as well. Again, because he's on the map, he's in the open field, all of his skills apply and he gets some really valuable march speed. And once you go below that 50% mark, if you're really chaining barbarians really far away from your city you're gonna get some nice damage bonus and march speed bonus as well which means you're gonna come back to your city quickly and honestly march speed is really important when it comes to killing barbs because you can kill barbs much faster however he doesn't have the peacekeeping tree he doesn't give you extra experience or more damage to barbarians or anything like that so because of those reasons he also is a b tier commander in this category so if we look at how Elsid performed in all of these categories he is ultimately a c tier legendary commander in my opinion in terms of investment he is rarely ever a top choice unless it's a brand new kingdom and honestly you get him from gold keys for free so that's the good news but again my account is 811 days old and he's 5541 which means my Cid is only about halfway to expertise at this point which is really sad to think about anyway with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on El Cid. Do you think I'm right? Do you think that I'm wrong? And comment down below what commander you want to see next from this tier series. As always, my social media links are in the description below. Make sure you follow me over there on Instagram and Twitter, Discord, and Twitch. Everywhere else, links are in the description. Finally, there's a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Bluestacks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. If you're playing on an older phone, you'll probably have fewer crashes playing with Bluestacks. And like I said, it's free. So why don't you click the link and give it a try? With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.